Okay, so here is the uh, second prototype for the variable center of gravity unit. I've got it installed in the uh, aeroplane. And at the moment you can see uh, here I've just got, uh, you know, this, this mocked up unit is uh, a servo that's too big to fit in my existing uh, canopy or cockpit at the moment. So I've just made this um, uh, temporary hatch. Uh, for testing purposes and I've just mounted the servo with the piping out but in uh, in the next prototype uh, I'll hopefully have a smaller servo inserted and modified and that will fit entirely uh, inside the the ballast tube and cockpit itself and you can use the uh, conventional hatch for closing uh, the cover. Uh, so I'll take it out of the model and I'll show you uh, in a sec how the, the lead screw works and how it looks. Uh, but before that I thought uh, I've got it set up on the CG unit so I thought I'd just run it through the forward centre and rearward centre of gravities and you can see the effect on the, uh, the plane. At the moment it's producing uh, a 3 millimeter change in the centre of gravity. So uh, for me, that's uh, between 107 millimeters and 110 millimeters. Uh, the way I fly the plane. So uh, at the moment, it's in the center. So if I, I've got it set to a switch at the moment, which makes it fairly easy. So the forward center of gravity. So that would be 107. And then back to the central center of gravity, uh, which should be 108 and a half millimeters. And then the rearward position, that would be uh, 110 millimeters. And this could also be uh, obviously connected to a slider or, um, or mixed to your camber. If, if that's what uh, how you want it to fly. But for the moment, for testing purposes, I just need to get it in the air and be able to move it between the center of gravity without it mixed into any, uh, any other function, just so I can gather some, some empirical uh, evidence on, uh, on how it's actually affecting the flight performance of the aeroplane and uh, whether it's uh, going to be a, a useful thing or not. Okay, so uh, I'll just uh, I'll cut the, the video here and we'll uh, take a look under the hatch and I'll show you the, the installation. Okay, so let's take a little look under the bonnet and see how it works. Uh, now hopefully you can see this. The rear attachment point is inside here. So the ballast tube uh, on the Maxa model here runs under the wing and then uh, right here I can position a screw which is at 300 millimeters approximately from the, the forward screw. Uh, if I wanted to get more travel then I'd look at uh, drilling through the, uh, the, the boom here, probably on the underside, uh, or probably here actually. Uh, there's, a, you know, the existing carbon here of the, um, of the tail boom and the pod finishes around here and the pod's plenty strong in this area so there's no, no drama uh, from, a, uh, from a strength perspective to drill a little hole in here there's multiple multiple layers of material here uh, so I, I, I personally wouldn't be concerned about drilling a hole there so if I wanted more travel then I'd be extending back into this area here uh, so there's the, the rearward screw the forward screw is just the um, the usual screw that you'd use for the ballast and um, then as I said the, the servo unit itself uh, is poking upwards from the canopy. Uh, in the, uh, the third prototype that I'll make it'll have a very small 8 gram servo which will actually fit uh, downwards uh, with the push on my model, the way I've got it set up with the push rods clearing and everything will be, be nice and clear. 
and in addition to that it'll be able to be pulled in and out uh, if you wanted to fly with the ballast. This is uh, a light model so I don't ever actually fly this with ballast but um, you know if you put in a different model then you'd want to be pulling it in and out. The next, uh, so after that prototype the next one I'll make will be uh, one that actually fits under the servo tray and it will go from uh, the, the forwardmost position where I can fit it uh, just behind the lead with the battery sitting on top it'll have its own tube and then it'll run all the way uh, back to here and having the centre of gravity moving at a point that's not under the wing uh, gives it uh, a, a lot more range and it also enables you to uh, offset the weight of the servo and the weight mechanism since they're positioned are close to where your lead is so essentially you just remove the weight of the servo and uh, whatever components are in this forward part of the plane from the lead so you don't gain a one-to-one -one advantage but you certainly offset you offset uh, a lot of the weight of the unit which at the moment is i didn't i don't think i'll get to my 30 gram uh, goal i think it's now looking like about 35 grams uh, but that's still not too bad Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll slide the model out of the aeroplane for you. Okay, so hopefully I'll have enough hands to do this. Uh, here it comes. Uh, I've got a wire wrapped around something there. Let's see if I can remove that. Uh, this is the new lead screw that I, I've just finished machining. Uh, there's the weight, and now the, uh, we switched it off with the weight in the rearmost position, so that's the, uh, the lead screw in the unit there. Okay, so here is the unit in action. So it's the central, central uh, point of, of gravity. And so just like any servo, the, uh, uh, you can adjust the, the travel or the limit, uh, which you actually have to do, uh, so that the, the screw doesn't drive the, the counterweight into any of the end, end stops. Uh, and then the sub trim, uh, the center point is adjusted with sub trim, uh, the end points, and uh, just like any normal servo, it just does uh, 15 to 16 times. Oh, actually, sorry, more than that. Uh, uh, it must do 36 times more revolutions than a normal servo would do. So. Um, just when, when you adjust something, it, it, uh, it turns into a, it translates into a fairly large adjustment. Uh, but everything is the same. Sub trim, you can trim it. Um, that's as fast as it goes at the moment. The traverse time is about nine seconds currently uh, from one end point to the other. I've done a lot of cyclic tests on the um, on the survey just to make sure that it's not uh, the potentiometer is not uh, wearing out or degrading. So uh, I think I've done 300 cycles on this in excess of 300 cycles, and I can't uh, detect any deterioration in the potentiometer. So it seems to be uh, reasonably uh, robust at the moment. And uh, so I think as long as you know things like dirt are kept out of the system, so it, it does need to be kept in the enclosed tube, which isn't in contact with anything else, so it runs nice and straight. Uh, I, I don't see, uh, foresee any um, maintenance issues really with the system. Uh, this weight that I've got here at the moment is 20 grams, so that is producing that three millimeter uh, overall change in the center of gravity. Okay, thanks for watching.